Please stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ knelt to wash the feet of his disciples. Let us come before God to confess our need for cleansing. God of love and mercy, you know the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts. You know our coming in and our going out. We confess to you all our sins, those things done and left undone. We have not loved one as you have loved us. We have not served others as you have served us. Hear our cry, O Lord, accept our repentance Cleanse us, restore us, and lead us that we may love and serve in newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was sent to die for us, and for His sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he had loved them. By your Holy Spirit, write this commandment in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
a reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. The lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentil of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over fire with its legs, head, and inner organ. You shall, let, you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. The loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival for the Lord. Throughout your generations you shall observe it, as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what is also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began saying to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him and said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. 
When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This week, we read Matthew's account of Jesus' Last Supper, the precious meal he shares with his closest followers in the shadow of the cross. At this table, he grants the gift of his life to them and to us. But at this table of belonging and wholeness, betrayal and death also lurk. Jesus was at the table with his disciples, and he told them that there would be betrayal. The meal that is celebrated is a Passover meal. It's the story of God bringing his people out of the land of bondage, out of slavery in Egypt, with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. The Passover celebrated the deliverance of Israel from slavery into freedom, from the bondage of Egyptian power to the liberation of God's holy embrace. At a moment of deep threat, God spared the lives of those who adorned their doorways with the blood of a sacrificed lamb. As death reigned in Egypt, the life promised to God's people was fulfilled. The night before their departure out of the land, God commanded Moses to have the people eat a solemn meal which they were to eat fully clothed, with sandals on their feet, and their staff in their hand. Each household was to select a one-year-old male lamb without blemish. The whole congregation of the people were to kill their lambs at twilight, taking some of the blood and smearing it on the doorposts at the lintel of their houses where the meal was eaten. The lamb was to be roasted with head and legs folded up into the body cavity, so no bones were broken. They were to eat the roasted meat with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. And if any remained until morning, they were to burn it. Moses told the people, you shall observe this rite as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. And when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep his service. And when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt when he slew the Egyptians but spared our houses. It seems God took something the people were already familiar with and reinvested a pagan ritual with new be meaning. Now the blood of the lamb project, projects, protects them from the angel of death. The meat supplies them nourishment for the journey that lay ahead and strengthens them to receive God's promise of deliverance. And it supplies the way for future generations to stay connected to God's salvation history. Not just to remember what God did for them long ago, but to relive the event, for they too are a part of the first Passover and therefore participants in the Exodus. As Jesus shares the Passover meal with his disciples, he took two elements of the meal and reinvests them with a new meaning. Jesus creates a new covenant, the bread becoming symbolic of his body and the cup of wine, his blood relating to his sacrificial death. The cross now becomes the altar, and Jesus is God's lamb, sacrificed for the sins of the world. It is not an accident of history, but the work of divine sovereignty, that Jesus was crucified on the day of Passover and to the very hour. Jesus was bound to the cross at 9 a.m., the time when the Passover lamb was bound to the horns of the great altar in the temple court in Jerusalem. Jesus died at 3 p.m., the very time when the lamb was sacrificed for the sins of the people. The Jewish people had rehearsed this day for 1,500 years. In Jesus' death on the cross, the true Passover lamb shed his blood 
as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. But death always seems to try to find a way. One of you, Jesus says, will be my betrayer. And it was as if a ripple of rumors went around the table as everyone present said to Jesus, Is it going to be me, Lord? Am I the one? In our gospel today, Matthew challenges us to understand why and how. Why and how Jesus did such a thing. Moreover, why would Jesus even welcome Judas into the company of disciples in the first place? It's hard to understand, but it was part of God's plan. In Matthew and Mark, his identity as Jesus' betrayer is quickly appended to the first reference to his name. In fact, the gospel always places him first on the list of the twelve, extreme dishonor always attached to the betrayer. In the Gospel of Luke, it is specified that Judas's betrayal has a satanic source. In the Gospel of John, he is a devil and a thief. And yet, I'm always struck that here, Judas is not excused from the table even as his condemnation rings over the meal. It's like Judas was hoping that Jesus didn't know that it was him that betrayed him. He shares in the bread and the wine that represent Jesus' body and blood, the life that would deliver us from sin and death. In the end, it may be misleading to call this the Last Supper. Certainly it is the last time that Jesus breaks bread and wine with his disciples before he faces the harrowing cross. But Jesus makes a promise, a promise he will keep. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is not the last meal of a condemned man. This is but the first of many meals we will share with Jesus in a kingdom that will know no end. This is but the first of many meals without end where our bodies will be nourished and made whole, where relationships with God and one another are mended and exude the resurrected life. This is but the first of many meals where we will draw closer to God and to one another. Even though Jesus predicted that his friends would betray him, he still instituted the sacrament of Holy Communion for them and for the future body of Christ, the church. He even says to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This is but one meal, but what a meal it is. Such a beautiful meal can only be accompanied with singing a song whose notes reverberate across the years and come into our ears every time we share this feast with our brothers and sisters in Christ. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we declare our Lord's death among ourselves. It is a way that we recall what he did for us by dying for our sins. We remember that he established this holy meal as a way to remember not only what he did, but also to look forward to the day when we eat and drink with him again at the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. Holy Communion is more than a profession of our faith. We confess whenever we eat and drink that Christ is truly present in the bread and wine. Therefore, the gift of Christ's body and blood may only be received in faith. It is not mere religious observance. Instead, it is God working through his supper to enliven and establish our faith through continued grace. From his fullness, we continue to receive grace upon grace. So we celebrate the Lord's Supper together because we are not alone on this journey. We are shaped together, and as we do this together, we know that the church around the world is doing this with us. Together we are being filled with Jesus as we eat the bread and take the cup. Eat, drink, receive the new covenant, Jesus says. Together we become more and more like Jesus until he comes again. Amen. <clears throat> We pray. We pray. We pray. (laughs) 
We continue with the prayers, and I invite you to remain seated. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all servants of the church and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishop, pastors, other ministers, and all those who lead by example using the spiritual gift for the building up of the body of Christ. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church and help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith and keep us united in fellowship and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the full fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you through, though they may not know your name. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, may they come to know and love you and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and in the lives of Christians and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, 
You give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick. Comfort the dying. Give safety to travelers. Free those unjustly deprived of liberty. And deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, for endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham and Sarah, you promised to bless all nations. In power and great glory, you rescued Israel, your chosen, from the oppression of Pharaoh. You shielded your people from the angel of death, delivered them out of the hands of their pursuers, and by fire and cloud, led them through the sea out of despair and the slavery into freedom and the land you had promised. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise, and at this, the end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in words and deeds proclaim your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and said, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he sang, Baruch atarunai loheinu melech haolam bohe pui hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who gives us the fruit of the vine. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we give you thanks for Christ, our Passover Lamb, who by his life and death has delivered us from our captivity to sin, whose blood shields us from the angel of death, who leads us into the fullness of your promises, and who now spreads this Passover meal before us. Send now your Holy Spirit that we who gather at his table may be filled with his blessings and grace and by your mercy may enter into the fullness of your kingdom and with all your people share the feast that has no end. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ruler of the universe. All praise and glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift and faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And you may be seated. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are wholly enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who seek me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls and me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and warring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They store, stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell you your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live for all ever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. <clears throat> 